as well. Dear students, welcome to Lok Satta Yashashvi Bhav. Kindly look at the design which has been drawn at the board. Don't you find it nice and beautiful to your eyes? I know your answer would be definitely yes because there is a specific pattern being drawn used in drawing it. Children, in nature also, we find so many beautiful objects following a specific pattern like the petals of the sunflower, the leaves of the tamarind tree. Also, we find a specific pattern in the numbers of mathematics also. Surprised, you got to know more about it. So here I am, Mrs. Jyoti Gaudi, going to explain you the first topic of standard 10th algebra syllabus, arithmetic progression and geometric progression. In this topic, arithmetic progression and geometric progression, which is generally denoted as AP and GP, we are going to take the following topics. First, what is a sequence? Second, what is a progression? Third, what are the types of progression? Fourth, what is an arithmetic progression? Fifth, what is a geometric progression? Sixth, what is an arithmetic mean? And lastly, we are going to see what is geometric mean. Let us come to the first part, that is what is a sequence. After you understand what is a sequence, then we are going to come to the progression and then finally in this session, I am going to explain you what is an arithmetic progression. Children, consider this following arrangement of numbers. The first arrangement states 1, 3, 5, 7 and so on. The second arrangement is 2, minus 4, 8, minus 16, 32 and so on. If you carefully find these two arrangements, you find here in the first arrangement, the second number is obtained by adding 2 to the first number. Again 2 is added, we get the third number. Again 2 is added, we get the fourth number and the series continues. See carefully the second arrangement. The first number is 2. Multiply minus 2 to it, we get minus 4. Again multiplying minus 2 to it, we get 8. Again multiplying minus 2, we get minus 16 and the series continues. So if we carefully observe these two arrangement of numbers, we find there is some relationship between two consecutive numbers and this we call as a sequence. Let us see what is a sequence once again. A sequence is a collection of numbers arranged in a definite order following a definite rule as we had seen just now and then we say each number in the sequence is called as a term which is denoted as a small t. Let us see one example related to it so you get a clear idea about it. See the example 1, 3, 5, 7 and so on. Here we find 1 is the first term which is denoted as t1. 3 is the second term which is denoted as t2. 5 is the third term which is denoted as t3 and so on. So students now can you tell me what is the number in the nth position be denoted as? Yes, it is denoted as tn. When we have seen the various terms now we come to one more term which is called as sum of the terms which is denoted as S and we say Sn is equal to T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus Tn. When we see the sum of these terms we also say that the sum of the first term is T1 that is the first term and here in this example the first term is 1. Also we can say S2, that is sum of the two terms, is T1 plus T2, that is 1 plus 3, that is equal to 4. Similarly, S3 is equal to T1 plus T2 plus T3, that is equal to 1 plus 3 plus 5, that is equal to 9. And looking at these four equations, what can we say? We say
say that the first term is nothing but the sum of the first term which is 1. S2 minus S1 is T2 minus T1 that is 4 minus 1 that is 3. And children what is 3? 3 is nothing but the second term of your sequence. Whereas S3 minus S2 is equal to T3 minus T2 that is equal to 9 minus 4 that is 5. Again 5 is your third term in the given sequence. So in general what can we say? We can say Sn minus Sn minus 1 is equal to Tn. And so students learn your first formula related to Tn that is the sum of the first term minus the sum of the previous term is equal to Tn. Take two examples so we consider the example for the sequence 3, 9, 27 and so on. Find the next two terms. Let us write the sequence once again. The sequence is 3, 9, 27 and so on. Here we know that the first term T1 is equal to 3. T2 is equal to 3 into 3 that is 3 square that is 9. T3 is equal to 3 square into 3 that is 27. So T4 would be 3 cube into 3 that is 27 into 3 that is 81 and T5 would be 3 raised to 4 into 3 that is 81 into 3 that is 243. So students now you easily say the next two terms in the given sequence are 81 and 243. One more example you want? Okay, let us solve one more example. Find the first three terms for Sn is equal to n square n plus 1. Let us write the given equation once again. Given Sn is equal to n square n plus 1. Now they have asked us to find the first three terms. How can we do it? Yes, we can find out the first three terms. First by finding out the sum of the first term, sum of two terms and sum of three terms. How? Let us see it on the board. S1 we can find out by substituting n is equal to 1 in the given equation. Therefore, S1 is equal to 1 square, 1 plus 1. 1 plus 1 gives you 2. So, 1 square is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2 and you get the first term as 2. How do you obtain S2? S2 is equal to 2 square into 2 plus 1. Also giving you 4 into 3 that is 12. And the sum of the three terms that is S3 is equal to 3 square 3 plus 1 that is 9 into 4 that is 36. But students, these are just the sum of the terms. How are we going to find out T1, T2 and T3? Yes, by using the formula. Which is that, let us see. We know that S1 is equal to T1 is equal to 2. So the first term is obtained which is 2. The second term is obtained by subtracting S1 from S2. That is S2 minus S1 is 12 minus 2 that is 10. And T2 is 10, that is the second term is 10. Let us see the third term. S3 minus S2 is equal to 36. 36 minus 12, that is 24. And hence T3 is equal to 24. So we say the first three terms for the equation Sn is equal to n square n plus 1 is 2, 10 and 24. I hope students you must have understood properly what is a sequence. In the series of Lok Satta Yashashvi Bhava, we are now going to continue further. We have seen what is a sequence. Students, I would like to draw your attention once again to the following sequences. 1, 3, 5, 7 and so on. 5, 10, 15, 20 and so on. 3, 5, 8, 13 and so on. And the fourth sequence 4, 9, 16 and so on. Again at 5 I tell you to carefully observe the first two sequences. You find there is a fixed relationship between two consecutive terms. That is plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. And in the second sequence plus 5, 10 plus 5, 15, 15 plus 5, 20 and so on. 
and these sequences where there is a fixed relationship between two consecutive terms, we call the sequence as a progression. Children, there are three types of progression. Arithmetic progression, geometric progression and harmonic progression. But for your study, you have only the arithmetic progression denoted by AP and geometric progression denoted by GP. Now, once when you have understood what is a progression, let us come directly to our main topic of today, that is arithmetic progression. Students, kindly bear in your mind, when you revise and study for arithmetic progression, learn two things. First, arithmetic progression is a sequence. And I know you properly, you are knowing what is a sequence. Second, the difference between the two consecutive terms is constant. Getting confused a little, let us understand it by taking one example. Is the sequence 22, 26, 30, 34 an arithmetic progression? Let us write the sequence once again on the board. 22, 26, 30, 34 and so on. Here what do we observe? We find the first term is 22, the second term is 26, the third term is 30. T2 minus T1 is 26 minus 22, that is 4. T3 minus T2 is 30 minus 26, that is also 4. So we can say T3 minus T2 is equal to T2 minus T1, that is equal to Students, now let us go to the general representation of arithmetic progression. This is given by the formula Tn is equal to a plus n minus n 1 into d, where a is the first term and d is the common difference. I know definitely you would ask, what is this formula representing? Let us understand this formula by taking two examples. The first example says, find the 25th term of the AP 12, 16, 20, 24 and so on. We know students that when we read the sum, we understand that the given sequence is an arithmetic progression, which means that the difference between the two consecutive terms is definitely going to be a constant. So how are we going to find the 25th term of the AP? Yes, by using the formula Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1 into D. Let us solve this sum and understand it. Here, T1, that is the first term, is equal to 12. T2 is equal to 16. T3 is equal to 20 and so on. Find the common difference by subtracting T1 from T2 and you get the common difference as 4. So here we know that the first term is 12. The common difference is 4 and n is equal to 25. Now you would ask me what is n? n represents the number of terms. So, when we know these three values, we can easily substitute them in the formula Tn is equal to a plus n minus 1d. And therefore, T25, that is a 25th term, is obtained by substituting a as 12, n as 25, and d as 4. And so, the simple calculation follows forward. So we get 12 plus 25 minus 1, that is 24, into 4. Again, let me remind you children, you do a common mistake over here. That is, when you take 25 minus 1 into 4 and expand it, you would definitely add 24 with 12 and you would write the sum of it as 36 and then multiply it with 4 and you would get the wrong answer. So take care. Understand that in this particular right hand side we have two terms which has been separated by the addition sign plus. So here 12 is the first term and 25 minus 1 into 4 is the second term. And again when we calculate further we get 12 plus 24 into 4 which gives us 96 and the sum of 96 and 12 gives us 108 and so we say 
the 25th term of the given arithmetic progression is 108. Are you getting the doubt cleared out? Well, very nice. Children, if you have a query in any of the part which is taught up till now, kindly refer to www.loksaptar.com or send your queries or email it to the following address. Let us go further to the second sum, that is, how many terms are there in the arithmetic progression 187, 194, 201, so on to 439. Observe the question carefully. What do you find? The arithmetic progression consists of the first term and also the last term which is 439. So here we do not have to find the last term or the fifth term or the seventh term. But the number of terms which lies in this progression from 187 to 439 means in short we have to find out n. How can we do it? Let us see how to solve it. Given arithmetic progression 187, 194, 201 to 439. Here again we have the first term T1 that is A that is 187. We get the value of the common difference by subtracting the second term from the first term and so we get 194 minus 187 that is 7 and here Tn that is the last term is Tn which is 439. Substitute the values where in the formula which you have learned just now Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1D and so we get 439 is equal to 187 plus n minus 1 into 7. Again, remember what I told you in the previous sum. Here, there are two parts of the right hand side. 187 is the first part and n minus 1 into 7 is the second part, which has been separated by an addition sign. So, we do it in the second step. 187 plus 7 into n gives us 7n. 7, 7 into 1 gives us 7. So we get the right hand side as 187 plus 7 and minus 7. Let us do the further step and we get 439 is equal to 180 plus 7 n. How do we get 180? We subtract 7 from 187 to get 180. And then we bring this value 180 to the left hand side so that we can find out the value of n. And so we get 7n is equal to 259. And when we divide both the sides by 7, what are we going to get? Yes, the value of n, that is 37. And what is 37? Is it our answer? Yes, obviously. So how many terms are there? Well, there are 37 terms in the given arithmetic progression. So children, what have we seen up till now? We have seen first what is a sequence, what is a progression, the types of progression. Then we landed to what is an arithmetic progression and now we have seen in arithmetic progression what is the general representation of arithmetic progression. Now children, let us see some of the first n terms of an arithmetic progression. This is given by two formulas. The first formula states Sn is equal to n upon 2 into 2a plus n minus 1d where a is the first term, n is the number of terms and d is the common difference. Or you can use the formula Sn is equal to n upon 2 into a plus l where we know the last term that is l. Children, you will understand both the formulas when I take one example each. Let us see the first example which says find the sum of 10 terms when given a is equal to 6. You remember what is a? Yes, it is the first term and d is the common difference which is 3. Now when we have to find out s10 that is the sum of the 10 terms given a is 6 and d is 3. We are not knowing the last term. So we are going to use the first formula Sn is equal to n upon 2, 2a plus n minus 1 into d. Let us write we have a is equal to 6, 
d is 3 and n is 10 and substitute these form, uh, values in the given formula. Therefore, S10 is equal to 10 upon 2. We have substituted N as 10. Then we write 2 into 6. So we have substituted A as 6. And now we are going to substitute once again N as 10. So 10 minus 1 and D as 3. So we get 10 upon 2 into 2 into 6 plus 10 minus 1, 3. We know that 10 divided by 2 gives us 5. We also know 2, 6 are 12. I hope you remember the two tables which you have learned in standard first. Plus 10 minus 1 gives you 9. 9 into 3 gives you 27. When you add 27 to 12 and then find the product with 5, we get the answer 195, which is nothing but the sum of the first 10 terms. Let us see one more example and get the idea clear about the second formula to be used. The second sum says find the sum of all odd natural numbers from 1 to 150. This is a type of a word problem but do not get worried because we know what are odd natural numbers, isn't it? Yes, definitely the odd natural numbers are 1, 3, 5, 7 and so on. So, why are you afraid of solving the sum? Let us solve it further. The odd natural numbers from 1 to 150 are 1, 3, 5, so on. But do we know the limit? Yes, we are knowing that the natural numbers are lying between 1 to 150. So 149 would be our last term and so be cautious in writing a full stop after the sequence which shows that the sequence is a finite sequence where there are limited number of terms in it. Now children, once when you know that the odd natural numbers are these, we are not knowing how many of them are there from 1 to 150, means in short we are not knowing the value of n. So let us find out by using the formula tn is equal to a plus n minus 1 into d. Where we substitute the value of a as 1, n we are going to find out d as 2 and the nth term is 149. Again solving the regular steps we get 149 is equal to 1 plus 2n minus 2. Subtract 2 from 1, we get minus 1. Bring this minus 1 on the right side, left side and we get 149 plus 1 is equal to 150. And in short, we find the value of 2n as 150 and dividing both the sides by 2, we get n is equal to 75. n is 75 means what? Yes, that is there are 75 terms lying from 1 to 150 which are odd natural numbers. Now once we get the value of n, it is very simple to find out the sum of the 75 terms. By using which formula? Definitely you would answer me Sn is equal to n upon 2a plus l because you know the answer that is a is the first term that is 1 and l is the last term that is 149. And hence, substituting in the value, we get S75 is equal to 75 upon 2 into 1 plus 149 and you get 1 plus 149 as 150. Dividing it with 2, we get a value 75. 75 into 75 is 75 square. Once again, we are going to use the method which is learned in standard 7 of finding the squares ending the digit with 5, that is any number which ends with 5, its square will adopt a particular method. 5 square is 25 and 7 multiplied with its next consecutive number 8 would give you 56. And hence we can say 75 into 75 is 75 square and that is 5, 6, 2, 5. And hence we say the sum of the 75 odd natural numbers from 1 to 150 are 5,600.
25. Isn't it simple to understand the concept? When I was talking about word problems, please do not get frightened about it. Because I've seen, when you look at the word problems, you have the fright in your mind and you do not read the question. Children, I would like to once again tell you that kindly read the word problem very carefully. Understand it. See which formula and concept is applicable to it and solve it with full confidence. I am going to solve two word problems for you and then you feel that really the word problems are very simple. See the first word problem related to arithmetic progression. First one, there is an auditorium with 35 rows of seats. There are 20 seats in the first row, 22 seats in the second row, 24 seats in the third row and so on. And then we have to find the number of seats in the 25th row. Read the question once again when you want to solve the word problem. After you have read the question, try to understand it. How are you going to understand it? See what is given in the sum. There are 20 seats in the first row, 22 in the second and 24 in the third. Which means we are knowing the first term that is 20. The second term is 22. The third one is 24 and so on. Let us first see whether the sequence is an arithmetic progression. When we are going to see this, we are going to remember the rule. That is, the difference between the two consecutive terms 20, 22, 24 is going to give you the difference 2, which is common everywhere. And hence we conclude the given sequence is an arithmetic progression. That is, we write once again, given first term is 20, second term is 22, third term is 24, t2 minus t1 is 2, and therefore the value of the common difference is 2. Substituting A is 20, common difference as 2 and N as 25. In the formula Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1D. Now again a question would arise in your mind. Why this formula? The answer is, see the last sentence of your word problem. Find the number of seats in the 25th row. So obviously we are going to use the formula Tn and here we are not going to use the formula related to some of the terms. Therefore, T25 is 20 plus 25 minus 1 into 2. Again, solving it arithmetically, we would get T25 as 68. And so we say there are 68 seats in the 25th row. One more word problem and it will understand which formulas are related where. Let us come to the second example. Vijay is investing some amount in national saving certificates. He is investing rupees 500 in the first year, for the second year rupees 700 and for the third year rupees 900 and so on. How much amount he has invested in 12 years? Once again students, I am going to tell you, read the sum very carefully and understand it. His investments are 500 for the first year, 700 for the second year and for the third year it is 900 and they have asked us how much amount which means the sum of the progressions that is the sum of all the terms and then we would get the final investment in 12 years. So in short we have to find out the value of SN and not TN as read before. So we say investment in the first year is T1 that is 500 second year is t2 that is 700 third year is t3 that is 900 again we observe the difference between the terms is 200 consecutively and we say the given sequence is an ap once again what are we knowing we are knowing the first term yes a is 500 d is 200 and n is equal to 12 Substitute these values in the formula Sn is equal to n upon 2, 2a plus n minus 1d. So we get S12 as 12 upon 2 where n is substituted as 12, a is substituted as 500 and d is substituted as 200. Again solving it arithmetically we get the answer as S12 is 19,200 that is the sum of the 12 terms, 
that is the investment done in 12 years is rupees 19200 and so we write the final answer as vijay has invested rupees 19200 in 12 years once again i would like to remind you that when you solve a word problem read the word problem carefully understand it understand which concepts and formulas are related with it use them do your calculations very well see once again what have you solved write the units write the final answer and do not forget to write the final answer in words because it is a word problem so students we have seen the first part of the arithmetic progression and geometric progression in this part once again i would like to tell you that we have gone through what is a sequence what is a progression what is an arithmetic progression with its various subtopics again i will remind that for more solved examples and instructions kindly read the article related to arithmetic progression in the issue of Lok Sattah Yashashvi Bhav.